A lot of people have asked me why I have this Nikola Tesla poster behind me. You know, if I was an engineer, if I was involved in technology, it would make sense. You know, if I was an electrician, you know, these types of things. But I'm, I'm in finance, you know, I'm in precious metals and sound money. And it seems odd to have the Nikola Tesla poster there. You'd think that I had, I'd have a big poster of precious metals or something along that. I'd rather have the actual bars on my counter. But anyway... Uh, there's a reason for it. And there's a piece of advice that he had given out in his quotes up from him that I wish I had seen back when I was a kid, back when I was, you know, in my early teens, I wish that I had kind of read his writings and kind of studied what the entrepreneurs were doing and how they acted and all of that. Because when I was younger, I, I didn't fit in, but I tried so hard to. I had ideas, um, and one day I'll share the stuff I did back when I was like 14, 15, but right when YouTube came out, I had an idea to uh, review things, to review technology things, and I actually made YouTube videos back when I was like 14, 15. One of these days, I'll, uh, I'll share those videos because it's pretty funny, but ironically, I was so worried about what other people thought of me. Um, back then... I was kind of like a class clown. I'm like, is this the way that people, people laugh for this way, right? Okay, so this is what, how I'm supposed to act. Okay, uh, you know, I didn't fit in, but I tried really hard. And it made me feel like, well, what I really want to do is be alone and work on the ideas that I have because I have quite a few of them. Every day, it's like the way that I would describe it, it's like bumper cars of ideas going on all the time. And you're trying so hard to grab one of them and focus on one of them that when you have any type of external um, input on it, you you feel off balance. So it's my goal is to be able to get on one of those bumper cars in my head and focus on that idea. And I didn't know that it it was a good thing. I thought being antisocial was you know what society doesn't want you to do. And so I tried so hard to blend in, and I cared what other people thought back then. Um, but I want to share these quotes on my screen here from Nikola Tesla, because I think it'll really help some people out there that might struggle with the same thing. Um, I feel like, again, I wish I knew this back then. So let me show you some of this stuff. And I also wrote a little thing here to kind of, um, share my thoughts on this because I wish society didn't make the antisocial individuals feel like outcasts, I wish they did. It wasn't like that. I wish people understood that when you're alone, that's when the real ideas can it w w rather that you could actually focus. I don't want to uh, kind of butcher his his quotes here, but let me just show you the quotes what I'm talking about. So I pulled up a few things. This is another photo. I believe this is also a real photo here. This is, I know the one behind me is actually a real photo of him sitting there alone. Uh, working on his studies in the middle of uh, an electric storm by his uh, coils. But these are some things that Nikola Tesla said. He said, be alone. That is a secret of invention. Be alone. That is when ideas are born. Another thing, he actually specifically brought up antisocial. So antisocial behavior is a trait of intelligence in a world full of conformists. If only he could see what society was going to turn into with all the college system and all of the stuff going on today. I wish he could see what it turned into today. And I mean, he'd probably be fascinated by all the tech. And I mean, pretty much a huge amount of the technology we have today is, is kind of a extension of Nikola Tesla. So he'd probably be excited to see like iPhones and things like that. But I think seeing people as a whole and society as a whole, it kind of weird him out a bit. The other, the last thing I wanted to share, he goes, this is another quote from him. The mind is sharper and keener in seclusion and uninterrupted solitude. Originally, originality thrives in seclusion, free of outside influences beating upon us to cripple the creative mind. Be alone. That is the secret of invention. Be alone. That is when ideas are born. So they, this part here is just taken off the end of that. But these are things that Nikola Tesla said. And it's very interesting that he says things like this. One of the best invest, inventors of all time made writings like that. Yet in school systems, they tend to make us feel like you have to blend in. You got to be like everybody else. And I actually, I wanted to share something on my phone here. 
that I had written a little while back. And it feels a little weird to share this because I, I, I still to this day, um, don't, if I'm at a bar or if I'm at a party or something, I just don't feel like I'm in my element. Uh, I feel like I've, it's just something's off. And so I'd rather be alone. And it's people have tried to find things wrong with that. And if you go to, you know, a therapist or something along those lines, they will find something wrong with you. You know, we're all flawed. They will find something. Uh, and so there's something healthy about it. And obviously there's supposed to be a balance there. But it's strange because I've always thought, you know that saying, you are who you surround yourself with. You know, if you're around a bunch of, uh, you know, bad individuals, you're going to be the, the next one with them sort of thing. And it all kind of rubs off on you. And I always wondered, my spin on it was, well, if you are who you surround yourself with, what if you're alone? What if you've been alone for a while? You'd have to be you, right? And what's going to happen there? And so then... There was, there's part of me that wonders, okay, well, if people say there's something wrong with you, well, what if you distance from the people that say that and you get to be alone for a while? How will you act? That's how you'll know if the problem really is you or not. Because if you're alone, say you start going to the gym, you start taking care of yourself, maybe you built a business, you're doing something, the more isolated you get, maybe start things start happening that are good. And that actually was the case with me. So... It's kind of a weird piece of advice, but there obviously needs to be a balance there. You don't want to just be isolated all the time. I know I suffer with that, and this is kind of my, everybody that watches my videos, everybody subscribe to the channel, just know that you're kind of my therapist in a way, because I get to have the the um, the blessing of being able to vent and talk with an audience here on YouTube, and it's actually, it does a lot for me, and so I really appreciate you being part of this channel and subscribing to this channel, uh, because it, it really is an outlet for me, because in real life, I'm not very social and I'm not very comfortable in large crowds. I, I kind of like to be in my, my isolation, working on my stuff. And my best ideas come from when I'm isolated, which is, is odd, uh, because society would tell us otherwise, but I wanted to read something from my phone. And of course I'm coming from a biased perspective here. Some, some people are very extroverted and they, thrive in large crowds and stuff like that. And I don't, um, I think way more clear when I have some time and there's not any sounds around me and I can be in a peaceful element. That's why I love being here all the time. Um, anyway, I wanted to read something that I wrote a little while back. It might sound a little dark, uh, to be honest with you guys, but it, it comes from a place of Society making me feel like I was an outcast growing up. And I have that chip on my shoulder going, I, I wish I just didn't care what other people thought. I wish in, in school I didn't care what the girls around me in class thought of me or what other people thought of me. I wish I didn't try to blend in so much. Uh, and I wish I just was myself. And I spent more time alone to focus on me rather than, and growing as an individual rather than looking externally. Um, anyway, I wrote this a little while back, and it goes like this. Um, pull this up. Why is someone who is antisocial labeled as a problem? As if being social is how to focus on a solution. Society paints this picture of fitting in with others as the human gold standard. Make sure you're doing stuff with others who draw inside the lines. Read the same textbooks. Study the same test. Polish up that resume. Stay busy. Conform. I've always found this notion so strange. Humans with supercomputers in their pocket, desperate to wear a gray t-shirt in a sea of gray. Appear society is so used to waking up on a hamster wheel that the few who chew through the cage appear to be a problem. And it's, again, it's, it's pretty dark in a way because I guess that's how I feel. But I, I wrote that a little while back and I wanted to share it because it seems to be like the, and a lot of my friends that went to college and got the degree and, and, and did what's the proper thing by society, they're wearing that gray t-shirt and they don't realize that they're walking around in a sea of gray. 
and they're no different. They don't realize, and they're starting to realize now that CEOs don't really care about your resume. You know, they care about how much value do you provide. And some people who didn't go to college and want to focus on whatever it is that they're passionate about, they're more valuable and they probably will make more money. And it's interesting that society tends to push away from uh, or push down rather the people that seem like outcasts, the ones that seem odd, that are different. You know, it's like, oh, there must be a problem with that individual. Oh, they want to be alone all the time. Oh, the kid's antisocial. That's not a good thing. Maybe we should put them on some sort of medication. Maybe we should tell that kid there's something wrong with them. Right? I don't buy into that. I don't buy into that because that kid might be the next Nikola Tesla. That kid might be the next uh, Steve Jobs, next Elon Musk. And society makes them feel like there's something wrong with them. Oh, you don't fit in with everybody else. You're di- is there something wrong with that kid? Oh, you got to put it in him in therapy or him or her in therapy. You got to do something to make sure that that person, you know, f- blends. And I wanted to make this video to say it's okay to not be like everybody else. It's okay to not blend in. Uh, it's okay to be different. And if you spend time alone and you get to know who you are, that's truly just like Nikola Tesla said, when ideas are born and when you can focus. And so it, it just is very odd that it's, it's labeled like it's a bad thing. Anyway, super random video, a little bit out there, but I hope it helps some people. I hope that somebody watches this and goes, you know, there, oh, that, that individual made me feel like there was something wrong with me. But really, I, I just am a, a certain type of person. I just like to, to my time alone. I like my isolation. I like to be working on these ideas. And every time looking back on things in my life, all the ideas that I had that I looked externally for validation, it, it the validation aspect of asking somebody else would push me away from something that was actually very good. I had some great ideas as a, as a younger teen that I wish I had focused on and, and quite frankly, just went all in on. And I didn't because I was worried about other people, what they saw, how I looked to other people. And again, it would have, it would have really changed my whole compass of life, my direction, if I did know that, if I did know that it was okay. And still to this day, some relationships and things like that, that I get myself involved in, I'm, I'm not, I don't compute as well um, as others might. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't tend to fit in the same way. And so I might be seen as something's wrong with me. And I have a whole list of flaws. We're all very flawed. I would imagine my flaws are much longer. My list of flaws is a lot longer than my um, positive uh, attributes. But at the end of the day, when somebody tells you that there's something wrong with you or that there's, you know, that, oh, you're, you're different. There's something going on there. Is it true or is it them that they've conformed to society and you haven't? So they, you strike them as, as odd, right? Anyway, a little bit of a, a odd Monday motivation video. I haven't made one of these in a while, but it's on my mind. It's something that I think about and I hope, again, that it helps some people out there because I wish, I wish I knew this stuff when I was younger. I wish I didn't care so much about validation from my peers because deep down, I wasn't like them. I wasn't like anybody else, and you're not like anybody else. Whoever's watching this video, you're not like anybody else. You're unique, and the more time you spend alone, the more unique you can become. Now, again, there is a balance there. You don't want to be completely antisocial and not know anybody. But at the same time, if you're documenting yourself and you're and you see real patterns of growth happening in isolation, then what's really the problem there? Anyway, that's the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, hit the subscribe, hit the like button. Uh, I will see you at the next video. Signing out.